Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. Okay, all right, we're here. Good. Welcome to worship here at Holland UCC. This is our first service of 2024. So glad you're with us, whether you're here at the Momentum Center or folks tuning in online. We're glad you're here as well. We are a community that is expansive, engaging, and inclusive, where everyone belongs at the table. We believe that no matter your tradition or background, how you identify, who you love, or where you are on your journey, you are a beloved child of God. Well, today we are celebrating Epiphany, and we will explore the journey of the Magi to the Christ child, and we will uh, particularly key in on the fact that at the end they had to return to their country by another road. And we'll explore what invitation there might be for us in that. If you're new with us this morning, we are so glad you're here. We begin our gatherings each week with a moment just seeking to be present in this space. So I invite you to sit back in your chair, maybe roll the shoulders just a little, maybe even close your eyes. And I invite you to take a deep breath in. Breathing in gratitude for this moment, in this new day, and breathing out. Breathing in hope, possibility, and peace, and exhale. As we continue in our mindful breathing, we ring this meditation bowl, which reminds us of the deep peace of God. yourself to the world in Christ. Now reveal yourself in us. May your grace shine in us. May our love be a guiding star for others. May our words and deeds show forth the reign of your mercy and justice. With humility and generosity, may we offer the gifts you have given us, the treasure chest of our souls we open to you and to the world. Star of God, shine in us. Amen. But you rise in body and or spirit and join us for our opening song in the midst of daily living. Thank you. 
friends? And also with you. Feel free to take a moment, offer a word of peace, or just a hello to someone who's near you. into our world, and nations will come to its brightness. Arise, shine. In Christ, God's light has been revealed to all people. The light of God has come into our world to proclaim God's justice and love. It has overcome the darkness and brought new life. Come and follow. Christ draws us into a loving family from every tribe and family Go and tell. The Spirit has equipped us for service to love our neighbors as we do ourselves. God, we have come to see and we will follow and show others. In times of scarcity, may we see your generosity. In places of oppression, may we see your freedom. In a world at war, may we see your peace. God, we have come to see and we will follow and show others. In times of despair, may we follow your hope. In places of hate, may we follow your love. In a world of deception, may we follow your truth. God, we have come to see, and we will follow and show others. In times of uncertainty, may we show your faithfulness. In places of corruption, may we show your righteousness. In a world of bondage, may we show your salvation. Amen. And may it be so. You may be seated. A verse for reflection this morning from John 17, verse 18. And this is Jesus in a prayer. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Our poem this morning is entitled Sacred Love by Catherine Riddell. Manuel Cisneros built a crash of rocks close to the lip of the sea. Hundreds walked down to see Mary, Joseph, and the three wise men, the small stone Jesus on his rock cradle. Around them all, Manuel built a low mission wall, no mortar or glue, just rocks coaxed and gentled together. He called his sculpture Sacred Love, speaking of the story he told. And love is what I call the work of his hands, like that of the Tibetan monks who spend long weeks shifting colored sand. And when their mandala is done, the monks sweep it away. Just as Manuel heads home at the end of the day, leaving the Holy Family alone to face the winds and the hungry sea. Sacred Love by Catherine. 
This time, I'll invite our kiddos to our UCC Kids Time. Any kindergartners to fifth graders? Do we have any takers today? We might be short on kiddos, so our, our leaders might just hang out with, with the big people. If there's any adults who are feeling crafty, I don't know in the range. All right, very good. Then I will invite our reader forward. Good morning. morning. Our words of integration and guidance today come from Philip Gorski and Samuel Perry. White Christian nationalism's deep story goes something like this. America was founded as a Christian nation by white men who were traditional Christians who based the nation's founding documents on Christian principles. The United States is blessed by God, which is why it has been so successful, and the nation has a special role to play in God's plan for humanity. But these blessings are threatened by cultural degradation from un-American influences, both inside and outside our borders. Like any story, this one has its heroes, white conservative Christians usually native-born men. It also has its villains, racial, religious, and cultural outsiders. The plot revolves around conflicts between the noble and worthy us and the rightful heirs of wealth and power and the undeserving them who conspire to take what is ours. Sometimes the conflicts culminate in violence Violence that restores white Christians to what they believe is their rightful place atop America's racial and religious hierarchy. The heroes are those who defend the purity and property of the white Christian nation with violence when necessary. But this story is a myth. Our reading of scripture today comes from 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 10, and 19 through 20. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel, so he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them. But warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and to fight our battles. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew 2, Matthew 2, 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born, King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. 
For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Amen. Well, this text sounds familiar. It should, because we, I think, began our Advent uh, with this text. But it is also uh, the traditional text for Epiphany. So we're reading it again today. And there's so much in this text that uh, we can keep coming back to it for more. And so, uh, technically yesterday was Epiphany, January 6th, and that's a date when, for centuries, Christians have celebrated Epiphany. And in fact, the Feast of Epiphany is older than Christmas in terms of Christian celebrations, which I didn't know. It's interesting. Um, there are references to Epiphany as early as the second century and observance of Christmas Day is celebrating Jesus' birth really didn't happen until the late 4th century. So, there you go. Christmas really didn't overtake uh, Epiphany in terms of importance until the Middle Ages. Now, originally, Epiphany was a double celebration. It celebrated not only the visit of the wise men to the Christ child, but also the baptism of Jesus. And some traditions still focus on the baptism and Western Christianity tends to focus more on uh, the visit of the Magi. So Epiphany arrives 12 days after, or just after the 12 days of Christmas conclude. And some call it Little Christmas or Three Kings Day. But of course, most of us in this country, at least, don't hear January 6th and think, yay, Epiphany. <laughs> At least, not anymore. January 6th has, for us, become a day that will live in infamy. Visions of rioters overtaking the capital, violently attacking police, and attempting to thwart democracy are now synonymous with this day. A day that, for many of us, is reason to mourn. Now, I don't want to spend too much time rehashing that more recent January 6th, but it's important that we don't forget it. Because here we are, three years later, at the beginning of another election year. A year in which the same energy animating that day three years ago still animates a substantial portion of the electorate. So much so that some national pundits believe that the conditions are still ripe for a repeat of January 6th. And what is that energy? Well, it's a lot of things, but it could be maybe pulled together under the umbrella of Christian nationalism, or more specifically, white Christian nationalism. And what is that? We heard a little bit about it in our words of integration and guidance. And Kristen Dumay, local historian and author of a book some of us just read recently, Jesus and John Wayne, she defines it this way. Christian nationalism is the belief that America is God's chosen nation and must be defended as such. And this view serves as a powerful predictor of intolerance toward immigrants, racial minorities and non-Christians. It is linked to opposition to gay rights and gun control and to traditionalist gender ideology. White evangelicals have pieced together this patchwork of issues and a nostalgic commitment to rugged, aggressive, militant white masculinity, which serves as the thread binding them together into a coherent whole. Enough to make you shudder. 
But we should be clear that nationalism is not the same as patriotism. Nationalism is not the same as patriotism. Patriotism is simply loyalty to one's constitution or nation. And so, of course, it's okay to say, I'm proud to be an American. Or to say, go USA while you wave a sparkler on the 4th of July. Patriotism is to be committed to your nation and the ideals for which it stands. But nationalism takes a darker turn. It is loyalty to one's tribe, but always at the expense of an out group. An out group who's deemed un-American, traitors, and enemies of the people. Historian Jill Lafore says that nationalism often disguises itself as patriotism for this reason. She says it's difficult to convince people to pursue a course of aggression, violence, and, domi and domination, so nationalists pretend their aims are instead protection and unity, and that their motivation is patriotism. She says this is a lie. Patriotism is animated by love, nationalism by hatred. To confuse the one for the other is to pretend that hate is love and that fear is courage. Well, in our Epiphany text today, we have a tyrannical leader, Herod, whose rule is fueled by paranoia and violence. He hears about a potential threat to his rule and plots to eliminate it, using violence if necessary, even violence against children. And so that's kind of the backdrop for our text. The beauty of Epiphany, however, is the wonder of the Magi. And the Magi reflect what white Christian nationalists detest. Difference. They're different. Racially. Culturally. Religiously. They're foreigners, hailing from perhaps somewhere in Persia. As far as Jesus and the Holy Family were concerned, or anyone in Bethlehem for that matter, they weren't, quote-unquote, us. And yet this story celebrates their arrival, their wonder, and their giving homage to this child. They are welcomed in. In fact, they become such a core part of the Christian story that we have a feast day celebrating them, one that is older than Christmas. And so as such, welcoming foreigners and celebrating difference is deeply Christian. But as we've said, beneath their visit of joy and wonder is a darker thread. The threat of political violence. The threat of elimination of one's perceived political enemies. And so the key line in our text for today's purposes is verse 12, which says, Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they had to return to their country by another road. They had to return to their country by another road. A political mantra in this country of recent vintage has been, Make America Great Again. And the again carries an assumption that we return to our country by the road that got us here. A road filled with racism, sexism, patriarchy, violence, and white supremacy. Which makes that particular slogan deeply unchristian, deeply divergent from the way of Jesus. And so what many historians, social critics, and proponents of democracy are telling us is that we, like the Magi of old, must return to our country by another road. A road other than Christian nationalism. Christian nationalism, of course, is an ironic name because it's neither Christian in the sense of Christ, nor is it good for the nation in terms of upholding a pluralistic democracy. And so there's a contrast in our text with what many are calling for today. Christian nationalism says whiteness is normative, whiteness is best. But Epiphany reminds us that a diversity of ethnicities and cultures are present and belong even at the birth of Christ, who, by the way, himself wasn't even white. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Sorry, dude. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Christian nationalism says there's room for only one religion, Christianity, and our version of it. But Epiphany reminds us that other religions are present and belong, even at the birth of Christ. Christian nationalism says we will use violence in any means necessary to defend our version of our nation, even if it means living under an authoritarian strongman. And Epiphany reminds us that under the shadow of an authoritarian strongman, was born the Prince of Peace. And so in this election year, we must return to our country by another road. Because a road that says white is best is a road that leads to destruction. A road that says immigrants aren't welcome is a road that leads to ruin. A road that says we are God's chosen nation is a path that leads to tyranny. <clears throat> NBC News tells the story of Justin, who was headed to D.C. on that more recent fateful January 6th. Justin had come for the storm. The 30-year-old Brooklynite left New York in the early morning hours of January 6, 2021, and headed to Washington. The president had called his supporters to rally to protest the election results, and Justin <coughs> wanted to be there. But he believed something bigger was at stake the culmination of a secret war against an elite cabal of child abusers. He had fallen under the sway of QAnon. In his mind, politicians, Hollywood actors, philanthropists, and prominent journalists would be arrested en masse. President Joe Biden's win would be overturned, the military would take over, and Justin would be there to see it all go down. The truth would finally get out, he thought. And after that, all the world would be liberated and everyone would be happy. That's what he recalls thinking as he drove down to D.C. The judgment day that Justin anticipated, of course, never came to pass. On that day, dressed simply in a black coat and a red USA hat, Justin watched the initial rally from a large monitor, standing alone near the back of a crowd of tens of thousands. It soon became clear there would be no great reveal the president wasn't commemorating QAnon's long-promised day of justice, but instead rehashing a litany of baseless claims about the election, whipping up his followers with a dictate to march to the Capitol and show strength. So Justin obliged, walking alongside the thousands who descended on the Capitol, paused to take a selfie along the route. He moved through an initial set of barriers that early marchers had pushed aside then he climbed over a low stone wall, placing himself with a growing crowd at the west side of the U.S. Capitol. But he didn't venture past a second barrier or go up the steps of the Capitol, which was marked by a gate and a line of police officers. Justin never entered the building. What he was seeing at the base of the stairs was enough. At first, he thought it seemed like a gathering of MAGA supporters with elderly people and babies in strollers. But it had become something else at the Capitol. A cry of charge came from out of nowhere, and people in the front, some in combat gear, began slamming up against the guardrails, facing an outnumbered and rattled police line. Police officers sprayed the mob with pepper spray as Justin filmed a few feet away. I saw their eyes change, Justin says of the crowd. You know, when somebody gets really angry and you just feel like they're going to go nuts, I feel like I was watching people get radicalized. The mob, the flag, the violence, it just didn't feel right, Justin thought. It got me, he later said. I was supposed to be a part of a movement, but did I just get duped? He would later call that moment of realization, what else? An epiphany. <laughs> it felt like I had been kidnapped, he said at that moment, taken for a wild ride and then dumped back on the street trying to figure out where did I just go? What just happened? <clears throat> now it took Justin a year to extricate himself from the conspiracy-laden world that he had entered. But he got there with the help of 
family and friends and therapy. A year later, he said, I've realized how susceptible I am. Now I'm just figuring out what's next. Just taking a moment to breathe. Justin found a new road to travel. And so must we. A road that celebrates diversity instead of centering whiteness and white privilege. A road that celebrates other religions instead of centering Christianity and Christian privilege. A road that remembers our roots as a nation of immigrants. A road that recalls the ancient path of the Magi, which has room for travelers of all sorts. And a hard truth for me, and perhaps some of you nodding along, is this. <coughs> we don't do our nation any favors by ourselves otherizing or demonizing those we disagree with. We can't demonize folks who vote differently. We can't demonize folks who are Christian nationalists, whether they realize it or not. What we can do is lovingly, patiently, and winsomely show another way. And remember that our ultimate hope, it's not found at the ballot box, it's not found in political power, it is not found in a candidate. Our hope is found where the Magi arrive bearing gifts at the feet of a child. A child who gave up power and didn't pursue it. A child who celebrated difference and welcomed it. A child who gave his life in service and love of others. A child who would go on to proclaim that another world was not only possible, but was at hand the kingdom of God, a place of justice, peace, and joy. And so let us pledge our allegiance to that kingdom above all others. Amen. Maybe so. Let you arise in body and or spirit for our song of response, We Shall Overcome. Yeah. 
consider uh, setting up automatic giving, which just makes it happen automatically. You don't have to think about it, and it helps us with budgeting and planning purposes. We have these sheets in the back if you have interest in doing that. Of course, you may give as the basket is passed, or also online via the Giveify app. And as always, out of God's generosity, we give, asking that God will use these gifts and us to turn our world upside down with love. Thank you. 
Thank you to all our musicians this morning. That was wonderful. And did you just write that song? Do I understand that correctly? Incredible. Wow. That was the first ever performance of that song. What a privilege. That was cool. We have time now, friends, to share some things that are happening with us, things we'd like to have remembered in prayer or something we'd like to celebrate. So if there's anything going on uh, that you would like us to share with the wider circle, feel free to raise your hand. I'll come around with Mike and folks tuning in from home. Feel free to share in the comments, and we'll do our best to pass that along as well. Um, my 96-year-old mom fell on the way into church on Christmas Eve and broke her hip. So that's what we're dealing with at the start of the new year. And uh, she had her hip replaced, and she's going through rehab. Pray for her to accept what's happening to her. Absolutely. Well, thinking of your mom in this time, you all, as you seek to care uh, for her and others as well. So the Lord's mom for... For healing and understanding, we say, Oh God, take care of our prayers. Other things that we can share this morning. I have a friend who's been on HRT for a couple months now, and this morning they woke up and texted the group chat that they were experiencing gender euphoria and actually saw a girl in the mirror for the first time actually feeling good about themselves so just being happy about that awesome thank you rebecca for this friend seeing who they are and feeling like their true self for that we say thanks be to god hallelujah beautiful other things we can remember together this morning My aunt Gloria died yesterday and ending her journey with dementia that has been going on for for many years. And so I would just like to have prayers for my cousins that they find some peace because it was definitely a, a, a struggle and a journey for them. Thinking of Aunt Gloria, her kids and wider family, uh, both mourning her loss and celebrating that she's at peace. So for this wider family, we say, oh God, here are the things we can hold space for this morning. So just before Christmas, our daughter um, had a baby five weeks early. We were really nervous what that would mean, but um, everything went well. They came home two days later, and baby and mom are just doing great. So we're very thankful awesome. for that. Awesome. Well, for a little healthy grandbaby for Keith and Alicia, we say thanks be to God. Hallelujah. First of all, um, Martine and Yasmin Amiri had a baby. This is the sister and brother-in-law of our Afghan family. They had a baby early, and I don't remember how early he was, but he is home and seems to be doing well at home. So we have that to celebrate. And then Paul Jonathan Baker um, posted, I'm losing a cousin to pancreatic cancer. She knows she'll be okay regarding where she'll go, but just how it's hard for her and us, her relatives. Okay. Well, in celebration for Martina and Yasmin and little child, we say thanks be to God. Hallelujah. And for Paul's friend, we say, oh God, hear our prayers. Just continue prayers for Ron Grimley. Yeah, absolutely. Continue to. Think of Ron and Marilyn. Glad to see you here today, Marilyn. And thinking of you all and praying for Ron and his well-being. And we lift you up to God. Say, oh God. Hear our prayers. Uh, you had all been praying for Jack, um, at, and we finally got the MRI results. And it, they did find a mass. So uh, we're going to have the 
Ooh, biopsy on the 22nd, so if you could all just continue to break one. Yeah, absolutely. And Rebecca, thank you, Jack, and you, and this journey, and prayers for continued insight and wisdom and a, a path to travel forward. So for Jack and Rebecca, we say, oh God, hear our prayers. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone for all the prayers and concerns uh, about Ron. I'll give you a little bit of an update. Um, he is getting stronger uh, every day. He has uh, three different therapists that are coming uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, he has a, a very um, optimistic thinking about what's going to happen. We're both very content. We knew his COPD started a long time ago. We didn't expect it to drop like it has, so breathing is very rough for him. But he um, remains very, very happy, and obviously we talk a lot and lots to think about. So I just want to thank all of you, and he misses all of you. He's gotten so in love with this church and all his meetings that he goes to, and um, so hopefully someday we can maybe get him back in here with the oxygen in his cell. Thank you. Thank you for that update, Grant. Thank you so much. Continue to hold you both in prayer. Any other folks that have something you'd like to share this morning? Well, we know, of course, there's much more happening in each of our lives and our broader world than we've mentioned here. So if there's anything else that you are holding on to, I invite you to lift that up to God in the silence.
details uh, to come, so stay tuned. We invite any middle or high schoolers to join and bring a friend. And do you have interest in joining our search for a new meeting space? We have a team that meets to discuss, search, plot, <laughs> you name it. And if you would like to join that, we invite you to do that. You can talk to Scott, myself, Mark Cornelis. Jeff's not here today, and we'll tell you uh, how to join. Any other announcements for the good of the whole? You can always go online to hollanducc.org for the latest. And now, friends, go into the world knowing you are led by the light of Christ. And may the love of the Creator go before you. May the life of Christ be within you. And may the joy of the Spirit shine through you today and always. Amen. 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 Go in peace.